And so I've got five major things I'm gonna run through that are gonna help you squat better. And the first thing, Slides are clean. This is my effort of the day. I've got my muscle motion. T, shorts, avo socks, and slides. Which looks fresh as fuck. Sick. Okay. Now I'm off to see Rachel Dillon to catch up with her quickly to get some samples to her show what's the update with her MNXRD collaboration. Then I'm off to see Ryan Spateri, which we're making a promotion t shirt for him and his diet plans as well and the chair's new office, so come with me guys. Matty Bart, squat session, awesome tips, and a workout uh, in the second half of the video, so let's go. One request, sing along. La, la, la. <laughs> your bottoms. Yeah, you can wear khaki blue, you can wear the black, you yeah. can wear seamless dark grey, you can wear... Green. You know what I'm like, because we haven't released anything black. Yeah. So now with the whole range just coming through, having your black style, Chris. that looks so good. Make I think it's, it needs to be like that that cut, but a bit compressed and, yeah. and more supportive. It just needs to be made into a sport. Sport, yeah. yeah. The, ban the bandeau. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they're doing again. You sent me of uh, the sample that you got in. Yeah. Uh, and now we took over and we started going through the process of you know looking at changing the waistband uh, into some color codes, which in the end it was a no. Yeah. Keep it simple, keep it black. Okay, leave with me, Rachel. What's up? That's all. Checking in, quick check in. Quick check in. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Chris. Hand off. I'll see you next week. See you soon. Adios. Adios. And is it working? Is it working? And you're waiting for the beat. We'll see you all. Hey. Um, um, I heard that pussy for the taking. I heard it got these other niggas going crazy. Yeah. Once you send them that, then they can then sign up and they'll have their own link. Hey Ryan, why don't you just send them that tricep? <laughs> The shirt brings out the tricep, doesn't it? You know, I went and saw Rachel before and she said to say hello, Ryan. And she hey, went, Ryan! Hey! <laughs> okay. So, there we go, so wave. Uh, we're now at Ryan's office. You know what cool is? That whiteboard is actually like a, a big sticker. You just stick it on the wall. Because the actual whiteboard... Yeah, 900 bucks would be one. At least. Do 1,000 bucks, yeah. 1,500 yeah. even. So that's like a office so we've got another one just there, and we just... Oh, it's called a prom poster. It's on post... It's called poster? <laughs> yeah, it's called poster. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, you just... Yeah. Like, it sticks to the wall. Yeah, it's sick. That's cool. And this is a collab t-shirt we've made together. Uh, we collabed with Ryan for his diet plans. He's doing a bit of promotion. What, are you going to give this away for a promo plan coming up? Yeah, so... I haven't decided exactly, but we're going to be giving him away with the... Hey! Wow, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I've only seen you for fucking four weeks now. Not longer than that, but you've been away. The one thing with it, I feel that they were tight when I put them on, but they're very, very flexible. And that's why I made myself train legs when the fucking legs are huge, bro. What the his, his cock doesn't fit in. <laughs> Can you take my teeth in there? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're a very slim, slim, uh, slim fit. When I, when I first wore them, I thought what you thought. And I left them on. And I left them on all the day before. Yeah. Then yesterday I trained in them, and I was like, well, actually, you know what? I, I fucking love this. Because they, they actually stretch a little bit, yeah, nice and they're sick. And they actually feel quite cool, like quite breathable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, even when you pull them, yeah. they move a lot, they move. But they go back to normal. I think they would need to be a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit so more to give. If, if you had, if, would you wear XLs? This is an L. This is an L. Well, yeah, I think I think an XL would, would probably be the right level. Yeah, Warm-ups are important for a few reasons. You're not only getting physically prepared, but also mentally prepared, especially if you're handling big load. For me, the, the purpose of my warm-up is to target areas that have been problem areas in the past. This might be injury, it might just be tightness. 
So for me personally, it's my hips and my ankles. Making sure my hips, my hips and my ankles are actually moving quite well before I go to squat. It's a preparation tool, which means hopefully I'm not going to hurt myself. So that's the main purpose for your warm up is injury prevention and optimizing performance. So. For a squat warm up, there's a few areas that I would suggest that you target to make sure you get mobile, get moving and get warm. One is going to be your thoracic spine, so doing a thoracic extension over a foam roller is perfect. The next, obviously, you want to get your quadriceps as well as your hips warmed up. So something as simple as a lunge, reverse lunge, long and short versions of that are going to make sure that you warm up your hips, your ankles and your quadriceps. And the final one, make sure your glutes are turned on. The biggest thing we see, or one of the biggest things we see with squatting is, is knee valgus, where the knees are going to knock in. And whilst there are many reasons for this, one of the first things you can do is make sure your glute knees are warmed up. We see many female athletes out there doing their banded crab walks where their band is around the knees. It's actually a great prep tool for squats. So those three will be the top items that I would put in a warm-up routine. So what are you doing at the moment? Working through a bit of external rotation. So when you're under that low bar, you have a, a minimal external rotation capacity, so to speak. It can become quite painful. I personally experience some sort of posterior delt issues. So I'm just preparing again, just make sure I'm preparing well. I'm doing some, some PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, just to say PNF, um, which is just resisting and then falling further into the stretch. Resisting and falling further into the stretch. Take it easy, take it slow. Take it slow. Ended up just like before. So take it easy. Next week we got to do 210 for doubles, yep. so that will feel heavy, but I feel good. Yeah. good. The weight at the moment is what? Uh, 190, 190 kilos, that's like 400 pounds of that. Um, so yeah, we're doing that for triples and, and effectively uh, the method here is just a sub-maximal training. This is not supposed to be high-end exertion, this is supposed to be good practice because your brain remembers stuff, um, legit. Central nervous system will remember how you move, if you move shit, you always continue to move shit if it's a habit for you. If you move well all the time, that's how you build a good squat, you know, a strong squat. Our, our grind is like calculation and precision, and like technical understanding and efficiency. If I make that bar move easy, that's me ticking the box, but as a, as a bodybuilder, I used to do bodybuilding, me ticking the box was like not walking out of the gym, you know? It's totally different, yeah. totally different. That's fun. 180 coming soon. Oh, yeah, great. before you know it, you'll be doing 190. Up here. Yeah, 190 down, not up. Just down. <laughs> Just down 190. <laughs> I'm come back up, man. So I've got five major things I'm going to run through that are going to help you squat better. And the first thing is about breathing and bracing, something that I commonly see done pretty poorly. And it's one of the first things I address with my lifters. Now, you'll often see powerlifters or even bodybuilders taking a big deep breath in before they do deadlifts, squats, um, but often it's confusing as to why. And the big reason that you're taking that big deep breath in is for that intra-abdominal pressure using your diaphragm to actually brace around the spine. So instead of sending that air to the lungs and a chest heavy breath, we're looking for a belly heavy breath. Expanding here, bracing through the abdominals and locking that in before we go into our squat. This not only adds a degree of safety, but also helps you add a lot more power into the movement because stability is the basis of power. So if you can have a nice stable trunk, through a big deep breath and brace, that is gonna be absolutely key to you actually progressing your squat numbers and your strength. So something that's extremely important during your squat is, is where exactly you're placing the load in your feet. It's, it's very common for people to do a very heel dominant squat where their toes are almost lifting up off the floor. I also sometimes see at the bottom of the squat the heels lift up off the floor, which means that we are distributing the load unevenly on the foot. My advice would be to attempt to uh, distribute the load through the heel, the middle of the foot, and the big toe evenly. And that's gotta be consistent throughout the whole squat. So from the top all the way to the bottom, the distribution remains even. But the way you do that is practice. So we can only um, understand what we feel. And once we actually understand, okay, I need to pay attention to that, we might realize, oh, all of my weight is in my heels and I could almost fall over right now. And we're gonna start distributing that weight a little more forward. On the contrary, oh, I've taken a video and, and when I get to the bottom of my squat, my, my heels lift up. Maybe I need to be more onto my heels when I'm in the bottom of that squat. It's observation and fixing things as you go, which is done by either coach feedback or, or video feedback. Can you 
say if you find that you're going too much up onto your toes or too much into your heels, is there a way that you can regress that? So maybe doing the back squats, or would you sacrifice the depth of the squat to ensure that until you're comfortable? For the most part, let's say you're looking at an individual that has no irregularities with their with their mobility. Yep then no, we don't need to do that. We should be able to adapt and adjust it with a full depth squat. What you'll find with a lot of people is they can't adjust it because they have immobility irregularities. They're having problems with their ankles, they're having problems with their hips. And as a result, we're gonna to have to actually look at those things on a local scale. So maybe get some treatment, maybe do some stretching and mobility. Um, I personally get direction from professionals who know more than me about that kind of stuff, so. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to put a thumbs up down below for us. And as well, if you wanna enter into a $100 giveaway, just simply read the description below and it'll tell you exactly how to enter in. All right, so bar placement. Am I gonna do a high bar, or am I gonna do a low bar, and why? It's important for you to consider what your goals are. Personally, I, I, I would categorize it. If you're a bodybuilder, I'd probably see you more towards a high bar, just generally speaking. If you're a powerlifter, you're probably gonna be more optimal than a low bar. It's just very general. The reason being, uh, it's a leverages discussion. So if you're moving to a low bar, you're literally just shortening the moment arm and you're making it more efficient for your body to squat that way. In a high bar position, it's much less optimal and tends to be a lot more quad dominant, just, just generally speaking. So if you're looking to build muscle, direct yourself towards a high bar squat. If you're looking to actually get stronger, direct yourself towards a low bar squat. Now, I'm gonna show you the differences between the two. And something to note as well is how wide the grip width is. Whether I'm going thumbs under, whether I'm going thumbs over. Again, to a degree, the thumb uh, thing is a personal preference, but it tends to work for a lot of lifters to have thumbs over on a low bar, thumbs under on a high bar. Okay, so a high bar squat I'm gonna show you guys now. It's gonna sit nicely up on the upper traps. It's a much more comfortable position to get into than a low bar squat. So a high bar is quite narrow because there's not as much uh, demand on your shoulder mobility. So you're gonna be able to wrap those thumbs, get straight under the bar, and it's right next to the shoulders, for the most part. Tuck into these traps, squeeze my shoulders back, and that's my arm rack. So high bar grip is about this wide. My low bar grip is a, a fair bit wider. I put my uh, pinkies out on the rings. So you can see on a, on a Lico bar, the, the pinkies out on the rings. It allows me to get right under the bar, row back, get down on top of those rear delts, a bit more external rotation required. I also have thumbs over to pin that bar onto my back and that is our low bar position. And you can see how different it is to our high bar position. Yeah, high bar, low bar. I'm gonna talk through a few of the pieces of equipment that I use in squats. Doesn't mean you have to, but I want you to at least know what the benefits are. So I've got them here, belt, knee sleeves, wrist wraps, lifting shoes. The wrist wraps are gonna be reasonably important if you're a low bar squatter. These are commonly seen being used in bench press, but can be equally as beneficial in a low bar squat. The reason being, with the bar further down the back, placing a lot more stress on the wrist going through these ranges, which can cause you some pain in the actual wrist joint. A little bit of support, or a lot of support to be honest, with these particular wrist wraps can be really beneficial when you get to those higher loads. Looking at knee sleeves, there are all different kinds of knee sleeves for weightlifters, so Olympic lifters, for powerlifters, and some people even use knee wraps. Talking about knee sleeves, their main benefits are gonna be warmth of the joint and proprioception. So warmth of the joint explains itself, but proprioception is the idea that we are more aware of that joint. We are more aware of the musculature surrounding it. Now, some people would anecdotally say that you're gonna get a little bit more bounce out of the bottom of the hole in the squat as well. Uh, for the most part, there is not a lot of evidence to say this is gonna give you more kilos on your squat, but I would say from experience that it does feel that way. And I would say of the three we've gone through would be the most beneficial so far is, is a good belt and a good leather belt. Looking at a 12 or 13 mil for most people, I have a, a combination of a lever and a prong. You can usually get one or the other. The, the biggest benefit here is this is gonna enhance your brace. This is a firm wall to push against when you do what we talked about earlier, the big breath and the diaphragm brace, and you're pushing out against this. What it is, is an artificial version of the muscular wall we already have. Now, it's important for us to do beltless work, but once we get to our heavier loads, no, this is not gonna protect you from injury. A lot of people think this is gonna protect your back. Incorrect. What this is going to do is gonna help you enhance your brace if you use it properly to hopefully lift heavier loads or for more reps. So what you're gonna have is this line of the bottom of your rib cage, and then you've got your hips down here as well. The belt is gonna sit right in the middle of that. So you can see here, I would place that belt just there. Rib cage is here, 
It's not digging into my hips, it's right in that sort of squishy part, so to speak. But that's your abdominal wall and where your diaphragm sits as well, right underneath the rib cage. Actually, it sits up into the rib cage. So we want to give as much pressure to that area as we can and stability and we use a, a good leather belt to do that. It's always going to be too, too tight and too loose and that's going to come down to personal preference. You're going to wear that, you're going to feel it, you're going to squat and you're going to have to decide for yourself. There's going to be a good pressure where you can't fit your whole hand between the belt and your body but you don't want it to be that you couldn't get anything under there because that's a little too tight from personal experience. Now the last thing I want to talk through is squat shoes. Now, now this is a, is a heeled lifter. Every single squatter has a different preference. Some people like an aggressive heel, some like a, a bit of a smaller heel, and some like to squat in flats. I'm not going to preach to wear heel shoes. I'm going to say have a squat shoe. Have a shoe that is dedicated to your squatting day. What, is def what defines a squat shoe is a nice, hard, solid, stable base. I don't want you squatting in some squishy, flimsy sand shoe that is not supporting you and is absorbing a lot of uh, energy. We want something that is going to connect with the floor, allow you to balance, and allow you to move as you want to move. So I find these in particular, a nice, strong, sturdy squat shoe that has a heel works for me. It might not for you, but please go out of your way and find a shoe that suits you for your squat days. All right, fam, the final tip I want to give you for your squats is, is the idea of having the bar over your midfoot and over, your, over the center of mass. So my number one tip, to be honest, from a technical perspective, is observe your squats from the side a lot, and that's the bar line. Observe, does that bar actually line up with the middle of my foot? And there's a range. Obviously, we don't want to, don't necessarily have to have it directly in the middle of the foot, but there is a nice tidy range in the middle of that foot where you really want that bar to float. If it's too far towards the toe, we know we might be leaning too far forwards, too far towards the heel, perhaps we are sitting too far back onto our heels. And neither of these things are optimal for squatting. If we can get that bar directly over the midfoot, we're able to exert as much power as possible and it's right in the center of us, so to speak. So that is the ideal position for us to have that bar as we hit the depth of the squat. So take your videos, slow it down, check it out, be critical and alter your position accordingly. All right guys, so we're gonna look at box weighted pistol squats, uh, which is a quad dominant accessory that I use on my leg days at the moment. There's a few purposes for this particular accessory. One of them is obviously for quad strength. The second thing is that it's a unilateral exercise, which means using one limb. And the importance of doing that from your lower body is also for your core as well. So there's a lot of compensation that takes uh, place through your core when you're doing a single leg movement. Think about being on one leg, all of a sudden the other side of the body has to really compensate to keep you stable and from not actually falling over. So that's one really strong benefit of something like a pistol squat. Now, looking at a conventional pistol squat, it can be done pretty much like ATG, after grass. I'm gonna do a slightly regress version, which is a box squat. So it takes away that demand on your range of motion, especially through the ankle. And to be honest, I don't have the range of motion personally to actually execute that ass to grass pistol. So if that's also you, you're gonna to wanna to copy what I do. All right, so the major things that I'm focusing on doing there is actually driving my knee forwards because what I'm looking to do is engage my quadriceps as much as possible. And the way I do that is to go into deeper knee flexion. So don't be scared to have that knee tracking forwards and you're gonna feel your quadriceps really engaging. The second big point of how you weight this exercise is it's front loaded. So I'm using kettlebell in front of me under the chin here, and that's actually gonna help me more comfortably sit into this pistol squat instead of doing it body weight or back weighted. So there's some crucial takeaway points for you to actually know and look at in the video and cue for yourself as well. So guys, obviously, this is like your middle ground. Um, where I would probably say to start from. If you find this hard, I'd get you to regress to a higher box. And if you find this a bit too easy, you can of course take the box away, go full ATG, so all the way down, or a lower box. So range of motion is gonna be your main catalyst for progression or regression on this box uh, position. Okay, so next we're gonna have a look at the Bulgarian lunge, which is effectively somewhat of a, a back leg assisted lunge. So the great thing about this exercise is it's going to really stimulate a whole lot of muscle groups throughout your leg, the glutes, the hamstrings and the quads. You're in a really active lunge position the whole time and it takes a fair bit of hip stabilization. 
the nature of the glute complex, so all the muscles surrounding the hip, is that they actually form a lot of stabilization so your femur doesn't wobble everywhere. So that's a big focus for this one is stability, making sure that you're tracking that knee in a straight line. So the way, the way that I get into a Bulgarian position is I start right on the equipment that I'm going to use, whether a box or something like this, and then take like a moderate step out, just like this, nothing too uncomfortable, just to here, and then put my leg up as so. And that's, that's pretty much where I'll stay. From here, you can kind of jump out, jump in and find a comfortable position, but that's, that's how I would generally get into position. Now, a little differently to our um, pistol squat, this is not gonna be as heavily knee dominant. We're gonna share this range between hips and knees, and consequently, we're gonna share the load between quadriceps, glutes, and hamstrings, okay? So the focus here is gonna be in a moderate to long lunge step, and to make sure we're putting a lot of our pressure on that front leg. A common mistake that I sometimes see is people really placing a lot of pressure into their back leg, and really that's not doing an awful lot for us. Our working leg is our front leg, so make sure you're leaning forward onto that front leg and placing a lot of the load through exactly that. Okay, so the Romanian deadlift is, to be honest, I think an integral part of any leg training program. The biggest focus that it has is on the hip hinge. And although this is gonna have direct transfer to the squat, it's really important to have a balanced amount of exercises in your program that both target the front of your body and the back of your body. Because there's no doubt that the posterior chain is certainly important in the squat, even though it's not as much demand as say something like a deadlift. And they're gonna be targeting, hopefully, if you're executing them correctly, the hamstrings and the glutes. There's a couple of ways that you can progress this and regress this because not everyone will find this easy. Now the first most obvious way that you can do that, guys, is load. So starting with a bare barbell, building up load as you can replicate the technique that you're hopefully using on the bare barbell. The second thing that you can do is implementing eccentrics. So for example, I might do a three second or a five second eccentric phase. And the eccentric phase is that lowering phase, so that stretching phase as I reach down with that Romanian deadlift, I'm going for a three count, two count, one count, and lengthening or expanding the amount of time and attention overall in that set. Another unilateral exercise uh, that we're going to use is the single leg glute bridge and it's going to be elevated as well. Something that is pretty much a staple in my accessories for lower body, particularly because it gives me a good opportunity to do a bit of uh, sort of unloaded post chain so to speak and also really good for hip stability and strength. So we have ourselves a small box or you can use a bench press, you're going to have the heel up on top of that and moving up into hip extension. The big focus here is to draw that heel down to get the hamstring working hard and a lot of time and attention. So high amount of rep, uh, seconds on the eccentric and if you're actually strong enough, a lot of seconds on the concentric, concentric as well. Thank you. We'll have this out soon. Thank you so much today. Last one. This one. Enjoy your week. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.